The regen thing for me really started, I think, not long after I came home. I could see that continual use of antibiotics, even within just a suckler herd, uh, wasn't really working. Um, and I think that's where my questioning of the current system really all started. Given time, I could see things were starting to work. Um, we were getting recommendations to use between four and 500 kilos of 0 26 26 uh, and we were, we were told to use it year on year. And I was saying to Steve, look, this can't be right. You know, this is costing, A, it's costing me a fortune, and B, we're doing soil analysis probably a, a year or 18 months after the first big application, and we're seeing no benefit. Well, I started realising what was happening. The, the, uh, the, the uh, phosphate was getting locked up. What was very difficult is that you, you seem to be um, working against the flow of the system. And uh, so from my point of view, you, you, you tend to be relatively quiet and work with the people who, yeah. who you think you They're can receptive. change with. Yeah, but um, I have come to the conclusion that it's difficult to, to understand really that you can get more out of doing less. And what we have to do really is to, I suppose, earn the right to be able to, to use less. I'm Mike Harrington, I run a company called Edifos. What we found really over the years is that the systems of growing crops have become more and more intensive and as they've become more intensive our reliance on purchased inputs, chemicals and fertilisers has become more dominant. And so what we've begun to realise is that we've, although been incredibly successful at growing high intensive crops, uh, we've actually almost gone way too far to one end and now we're having to, to begin to understand that actually working with nature um, in a little bit more of a, a, an integrated method is, is actually not only better for, for farming and food, um, but we can grow crops with much lower inputs. Andrew Lingham, um, managing partner of Peter Lingham and Partners yeah, at, at Court Farm, just outside Rochester in Kent. We're farming about, eight, just, uh, about 800 acres um, and 550 of that would be arable. Uh, and the rest of it is down um, for pasture, is permanent pasture. We're farming on grade three land. And uh, yeah, it, it, it's, it's a struggle. It's a struggle to, to make a living com uh, commodity farming. And it's as simple as that. And so the ability to add value has been absolutely crucial on this land. We have the butcher shop that's um, adding value to our own pasture, pasture reared beef and lamb, the shop, um, has just boomed and so in terms of investment in going forwards that's where I need to be spending my money and I need to be doing the production side of the business as um, I say as cheaply but certainly certainly cost comes into it I need to be taking a lot of cost out of there which really moving towards min, uh, to uh, first min till and then no till and cover cropping and moving towards and taking on a lot of what I call regenerative farming principles has enabled me to take a lot of cost out of, um, out of the production side of the business. I suddenly realised that our job as agronomists have changed dramatically simply because perhaps we were the driving force years ago in, in the intensive chemical side of things. Now it's about a more partnership role where perhaps we, we make decisions together and talk about the farmers more of a holistic approach. I've had more fun farming in the last five or six years than, 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 uh, than I ever did. I th we need to move towards this situation, that, um, in my opinion, that the output of a farm or production of a farm or the production side of a farm needs to be in some sort of ecological balance. I think with things like uh, cover cropping and integrating livestock, we can almost increase the, the base layer of, of what we're working with. So we can, uh, uh, but in, in natural terms. So, you know, just simply by, in, well, simply, it's not that simple, but, it, but by increasing soil organic matter, my soil organic matters now here on my cropping land um, are between 4.9 and 8.2%. 
that is what I mean by raising your base level, because obviously increasing soil organic matter level is increasing your, um, is in, uh, increasing your water retention, etc., which is extremely important here. And that's one of the main reasons I went down the no-till route. What actually seems to come about really is that in natural systems, carbon is collected, it's digested, recycled and released with nutrients and nitrogen as being part of a balance. And um, I, I guess really that uh, over the last 50, 60 years, our, our commercial systems have been driven by nitrogen, in which means that actually we've burnt off carbon. So we've, we've been creating a system which is being denuded and going backwards. At every opportunity, I try to get carbon into the soil. Um, as you know, every time I pretty much go through, I'm using a, 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 a litre of, of fumate and fulvic. And that's just a matter of course. It's, um, it's, it's just helping the biology in the soil uh, and it's also helping to buffer the negative effects of um, uh, uh, the pesticides that we are still using. But I'm looking to grow crops, um, I suppose, as naturally, uh, 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 working with nature as much as possible. I've reduced my glyphosate use by up to 40% in certain situations and I've only seen that being accelerated. It, this is incredible when you think uh, you're a 600 acre farm with two six metre drills <laughs> and what we spent 20,000. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, and, and, yeah. and we've added the applicator which yeah. is home built. The yeah. fertiliser applicator is home built for, for 4,000 all in. Yeah. You know, quite often when we look at uh, people moving into direct drill systems is that we realise that sometimes the soils will go backwards in the first year or two. Um, if you've got a soil which is uh, uh, being worked, you're putting air into it um, and, and therefore basically that, that, that can function. The first year that you go into direct drilling, um, the soils start to slump. Um, the air goes back off CO2 and what we find generally is that in your first year or two that the, the plants germinate slowly, they're less vigorous, they get less phosphorus solubilization, less nitrogen mineralization, and, and so having the option of putting a, a starter fertilizer through an applicator to help the soil in the fact that it, you know, it can't help the plant is a really good point. We don't want to carry on going forward uh, with that system, but hopefully as the soil begins to repair itself, we can start to look at more at accessing what you have naturally in the soil and connection. The biological scientists talk about the fact that your soil conditions uh, or succession, if you like, of your soil um, will promote the plants that are best suited to grow there. And whilst I, I fully understand that, um, what I seem to feel in the UK intensive agriculture is that we, with herbicides, we hone, we start to hone weeds. So we, we, we allow the wheat to become dominant. And with the huge amounts of nitrogen we've applying, we start to, 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 to build plants which would not necessarily be successful in a low nitrogen input system. And uh, if you're thinking about uh, the stacking of, of herbicides, for instance, to control blackgrass, you know, where we'll be trying to manage 98% control minimum of something which might be 2,000 plants per square metre, we, we are beginning to create um, plants uh, which are actually are dominating the soil. And we know that plants actually will then start to cha change conditions to their benefit. Undoubtedly, when we, when we do get um, a better uh, uh, bacterial fungal, well, fungal bacterial relationship, we will, we will see the amount of herbicide we're using dropping off yeah. because we're making, um, yeah, we're making that uh, soil um, not an ideal situation for, for those grass weeds to be germinating in. Yes. And of course we don't really want to be moving soil because if we, if we want fungi to be dominant and we can put yeah. all our lignum from our straw and the cover crops back in, we are beginning yeah. to create a natural environment for, for microbes to, to, yeah. to function. We're almost having to rewrite the books about how we, how we manage and understand soil. Um, and uh, in, in a way it's much the same with, with nitrogen. We're having to create our, our own methods of, of, of measurement to, to, be, to, to be sure that we can feed crops to the best of their, their ability. You almost need to earn the right to use these things yes. because your soil has to be in a position to maximise the benefit of them. It's a slight worry that the, the industry is looking to control problems. Uh, we're looking to outcompete problems. And yeah, what's ha actually happening now with the, the microbe systems is that one route is going down the pesticide 
uh, route of controlling an issue. Uh, we're trying to go down another route of, of bypassing and not having the issue in the first place. There's things that, that I have done here that haven't really worked um, or not worked maybe as quickly as I wanted to, but undoubtedly one thing that has really, I think, accelerated what we're trying to do here is the integration of livestock um, and also the, the, the living root principle, two of the main principles of Regen Ag. The more diverse we can come, the more, yeah. more stable the system. And diversity is it. That's just all you have to do is think diversity. People's um, shopping philosophy is, is, is changing as I see it. They want locally produced. Um, yeah, they want to, to know more where their food comes from. They probably want to spend a bit more on their food. Um, and uh, though, but yeah, they want, to, they, they want to have probably less quantity and more quality. And we're seeing that within the shop. Yeah. The, the one thing that um, keeps coming to mind each time I come down to a visit actually, is you, you talk about your pile of nitrogen that you bought some three or four years ago that you're still using. <laughs> <laughs> 2019, um, our average uh, wheat yield was nine tonne a hectare. Uh, and we used about, uh, yes, about 150 kilos of nitrogen. Now this year we're down to less than 100. I think um, if I, I sort of try and sum up the last sort of, I suppose, 10 years really, the, the last couple of years, as your system has developed, it is, it, it is now starting to romp, it's starting to, to accelerate. And if you, if you consider really the things that were taking your soils backwards were high soil cultivation, high chemical inputs, high nitrogen content, um, high fungicide uses, all of, these, all of these have had negative effects on a soil uh, taking it backwards in succession. Um, and it takes, actually it's taken quite a long time oh, yeah. to be able to wean off that. Yeah. And, and now we'll be, we've got a system where you're using less fungicides. So the straw going back into the soil has less inhibition to be broken down. We're using less nitrogen dramatically, um, dropped what? 50, 60, 60 percent probably. Yeah, yeah. Um, and the nitrogen you are applying is actually um, going straight on, onto the crop mostly. The system that we're hoping to move forward with now is measuring your soil, your functioning organic matter, measuring your cover crops to find out what potentially we, we're capturing, retaining and what we can release. Um, putting a modest amount on to supplement the soil in the spring and then managing foliar according to need. It, it seems like it's a much more proactive way of, of working with nature and, and, and crops and efficiency than the system that we had before. I'm pretty happy with my soils now. I know that they, they're not going backward. Um, they're, we're, we're doing more leaf tissue analysis to actually see what's happening within the plant. And I think you'll agree that since we've been doing it um, since 2017, that a lot of the deficiencies um, are, are, are turning into going onto the other side of the line and are, and are turning into be, to, to be on a positive balance. Yes. I scraped up 1.7 kilos of worm cast on the poorest field and I scraped up uh, 3.7 I think it was um, on, on the bet what I consider the best field. Well convert, convert that into uh, tons per hectare um, where do you end up? 17 and 37 tonnes of worm casts. Now th that is just phenomenal. New soil, new nutrients. Well, exactly, and, 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 and you know, that, I that is seriously building soil. Yeah. I think as each year goes by, we, we start thinking in a different way, thinking of the next step, where we're yeah. going. Um, you've been looking recently at, at maybe varieties which are better suited to the farm. Yeah. So because we're now dropping nitrogen, you can start to look at maybe taller varieties, more niche varieties, which yeah. actually can store more carbohydrates and grow and, and, and be better scavengers in the system. We're also growing this year um, um, six acres of a true heritage wheat. So that's, that is again a popula population wheat um, derived from old long straw varieties from the probably late 19th, 30th, 20th century. 
interesting. It's a bit disconcerting walking through a wheat crop when it's actually tapping on your shoulders or a bit above <laughs> it. Uh, but the fact is, we had to move away from from those wheats when we went to high nitrogen yeah, usage. Absolutely. You know, so yeah. all of a sudden uh, the, the system changes, and we can look at things that perhaps weren't so bad as as before. They're more resilient. They've got bigger, uh, larger root masses. It, it's uh, combining the. Um, or seeing the results of the, of the true heritage is going to be quite interesting, actually. I'm quite looking forward to it. And they, there is a, um, a six metre ecological buffer round, round all of those, whether it's a woodland edge or just a buffer strip or whatever. And undoubtedly, I've seen the, um, the effects of, of, of having those, those buffers around the field. You know, the, the biology is having effect right into the middle of the field. Um, I've certainly seen that with, 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 with ground beetles, um, also undoubtedly with the earthworm counts and, and, and everything else. When I was in the States, I saw Jay Fuhrer. He worked pretty closely with Gabe Brown. He could see that the, his regenerative journey with Gabe Brown was really accelerating. He just sat down and, and said to himself, I've wasted at least half, if not more, of my agricultural career. And, um, I feel similar. I do feel similar. It, it's, it, 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 it's not a regret. It's just, yeah, there's lots more to do. I'm thoroughly enjoying where I'm at. Uh, there is no way that I'm going back. Right.